Hi Vinyl Community, my name is Virgil. It's February 3rd, 2020. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm doing my third listening tour. I just completed one two months ago, but I've got some updates on stereo gear, vinyl CDs, getting involved, helping people, professional organizations, and much more. So let's take a look, starting here. Yeah, Lexman T10 FM Tuner. Uh, kind of took a dive on me about a month ago. So this is an upcoming project that I'm going to be working on. And I had to order something from eBay all the way from Poland to get some uh, new lamps and uh, a dial indicator light. So uh, that's a, a little bit of a problem. You got to do some uh, some soldering here. And then the other issue that I came up with uh, to solve the uh, string, which kind of slips when I try to tune the dial, Somebody suggested this Elmer's spray adhesive. So wish me luck on that one. And so now I've got to use one of my other... Fine, uh, uh, having a lot of equipment in this hobby. So I was able to get under the bed, grab one of my other uh, tuners. This is a Luxman uh, T300. It's an AM, FM. And if you look closely at the dial indicator, which works, by the way, uh, I've got it on FM and you can switch it over to AM and the dial indicator light changes. So that's going to have to suffice until I get the other one fixed. The other one My is actually uh, preamp. It's a uh, CL35 Mark III. Uh, I upgraded some uh, some of the tubes. There are actually seven tubes with this preamp, and I think there are a couple of tungstrums. I replaced three of them. They're all for the uh, phono stage. And then uh, about a month ago, I picked up uh, four Gold Lions. They're actually made in uh, Russia. 12 AX7s. I think they're for line stage and there's also an output stage. So I upgraded that and now all seven tubes well, have been moving down in the rack to uh, my other components. The CD player I'll talk about a little while later, a uh, particular upgrade. Nothing new for my Nakamichi cassette deck, but uh, recently got this um, Luxman M117 power amplifier. And why did I get that? You ask? Well, these babies over here, and this is just one of them. It's a KEF 1042 um, four standard speaker from about 1984. It's a four ohm speaker. And I do have a couple other amps, but they don't quite drive these speakers the way they should be. So uh, one of my uh, cohorts in crime out there that I uh, correspond with uh, regarding stereo equipment, Scott, thank you, Scott pushed me to get something a little bit more powerful. So this particular um, power amp, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I think it's late, uh, probably around 1990 or so. It's rated at uh, 200 watts for eight ohms. It's heavy, 51 pounds, huge heat sinks inside, and it'll power well over 200 watts. The uh, speakers I was just talking about, they're rated uh, they need something from 25 watts up to 200 watts, and boy, it's really made a difference. So thanks, Scott. Thanks for putting me into more debt. Back up on really top, uh, I did mention earlier in the, the video, uh, looking at um, digital. So I did experiment and bought a AudioQuest uh, Dragonfly Red DAC, so it can power the headphones pretty good. I have a pair of Sennheiser 598s, and you can see the color of the dragon. Uh, right now it's looking at uh, CD quality, uh, 40, 44.1 kilohertz. And this uh, particular device I bought in conjunction through uh, Amazon with the, the DAC. It's an Apple uh, uh, photo adapter with a lightning for the lightning port. And then I have an iPhone 10, 10s. So I've uh, started to subscribe to Tidal. And right now I've got some uh, Dave Brubeck up on there. And uh, what I'm basically doing is uh, using this uh, jack, which connects to the end of the DAC, which is what, a 3.5 millimeter jack. And you follow that cable all the way to the back, down to the preamp, which is that uh, down here and a red and white uh, RCA connectors go in there. And so I started experimenting with that and it works pretty good. If I can just keep Dave on the screen. Yeah, Oop. can't look, there you go. <laughs> so here's a little bit of Brubeck uh, take five. Yeah, so 
Got that going through the preamp. Coming through the speakers. Sounds pretty good. All right. So we'll cut uh, cut Dave off right there. Yeah, some timeout, take five. Uh, another uh, another experiment I played around with, um, and again, this, this particular DAC here, I think was about 200 bucks. So then I started doing some more research and came across this uh, Cambridge Audio DAC Magic 100. And so why did you get this one? Well, um, it came back to what I was talking earlier is I had made an upgrade to this CD player. This CD player is a DZ-112 from Luxman. It's, um, it was a very high-end player. I think it's 18-bit. I think it's uh, from around the late late 80s, maybe 1990. But uh, with this particular DAC, now I can have multiple inputs. And here's the actual uh, packaging. If you look at it, it's got a couple RCAs there on the left. And then you have two uh, SPDIF inputs. And uh, from that, I run a, a cable, which is a, um, what, uh, a coaxial digital cable. And I run that out of the back. And it goes into the back of the um, the CD player. So there's a that coaxial cable, and then from from the uh, from the Stack Magic out of the back end of that, there are two RCA cables that go down to the preamp. So this allows me to use this device to kind of do the same thing I was doing with the Dragonfly, but it also allows me to uh, get input from the CD. Now this. Uh, Cambridge Audio DAC Magic is uh, a 24-bit. So all I end up doing is uh, I have a USB cable. I would just uh, disconnect uh, this part, uh, plug it into there, and I'm able to go ahead and use um, use the DAC Magic. And, and if you look closely, you've got a source button. So right up at the top is a USB input, and then I've got uh, this one uh, set up. Uh, for the CD player. So that's made a, a neat change into my system. And then I can preview some music. And you know, I've have like over 600 albums and maybe 250 CDs. Want to make the best use of all that technology, but I also want to kind of explore some other music as well. I'll talk some more Listen, digital. Uh, LP bit. acquisitions, uh, Christmas came around. So my wife wanted a nice album. So I got her uh, Sylvie Vartan. She was a, a famous uh singer back in the 60s over in France. Uh, Chicago, if you leave me now. A friend of mine uh, gave me a couple of records from uh, the 1969 Woodstock Creedence Clearwater Revival. Uh, this was actually uh, uh, a reissue by uh, Kraft Records. And then I uh, got this uh, nice jazz Christmas album, Red Vinyl. Found this myself, Fine Young Cannibals. The Raw and the Cook, got it at a Goodwill, uh, about $1.99, found a corresponding single, She Drives Me Crazy, four different uh, versions of that song. Uh, found the four preps, I uh, like folk music, so I do collect that. I did see uh, Peter Noon earlier, uh, earlier, well, actually end of last year with my wife, uh, beautiful concert, great singer, great entertainer. Found Flash Cadillac and the Continental Kids, uh, got a couple of records. One, uh, one is a uh, Zorba the Greek from a, a friend of mine, uh, helped set up some of his uh, stereo gear. Uh, the Best of Lobo, this was given to me by my brother-in-law. And then last weekend I was at the uh, LA uh, OC County Audio Society for the first time and I bought this uh, wonderful jazz album. And then for my birthday, toward the end of December, Abbey Road album that came with a corresponding uh, shirt uh, to uh, match that as part of the package. So let's take also, a look. So I collect a lot of CDs and um, was at Savers uh, Thrift uh, thrift Store about a month ago and found a lot of good stuff for about 99 cents. Um, four CDs by The Who, 30 years of maximum R&B. So these came uh, in pretty darn good shape. Even have one with a concert ticket from uh, the Hollywood Bowl. So they're all immaculate, no scratches, no nothing. So that was a good find. At the same time, I found, uh, I think, eight um, Pink Floyd. 
Yeah, good haul as well. So I still haven't had a chance to get through that. Or two, uh, two CDs of uh, Pink Floyd on the, on the wall. And uh, sorry about that. So you might recognize some of the covers, All right? So that was a real good haul. All of them, 99 cents a piece. It was a great deal. So, so some Silly Vartan double uh, CD. That was part of a Christmas gift to my wife. On the Beach Boys, got the album. It's a double album. Nora Jones, I do uh, like female jazz artists as well. And Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and Young. The So Far album, great album. I have a cassette of this. Traveling Wilburys. Found the Foreigner. It's pretty good. And a bunch of Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Air Raid. That looks familiar, huh? So that was a good haul. These are all, again, 99 cents. I have the uh, the video. I also have the album Help. So I got this one and some more Beatles, Sgt. Peppers. I had a, an LP version of that and also have the video for this, Yellow Submarine and uh, Blue Note Records. Very high quality uh, CD, Thelonious Monk. And then the Blue Hour, a, again, another uh, wonderful Blue Note series, Stanley Turpentine with the, uh, the three sounds. So that's all I can remember in terms of the haul I got for some of my CDs. So, so many CDs and so of, little um, time to listen. Kind of built crates of store uh, LPs. And I did have uh, this particular CD rotating storage rack. I'm only showing half of it because up until last week, that's all I had. And each half would hold about 96 CDs. I ordered another one for about 18 bucks and it snapped right on top. And now I can have 96 times two. So it's a nice little uh, rack. And again, when you have your home and it's not... Uh, super big you gotta make do with whatever you can so that came in particular I, handy I as well. uh, own a pair of sennheiser 598 uh open uh headphones been using these for about three years they have that kind of retro look and they're they're very nice uh very good quality headphones and uh something happened over this past weekend that uh, was kind of a surprise to me i i went to my first uh Los Angeles County, Orange County Audio Society meeting. And the reason I went to that is I, uh, I met a person that watched uh, one of my YouTube videos that lives in Southern California, and he contacted me and invited me to the Audio Society meeting, which happened to uh, take place down in Santa Ana, California at Odyssey. Uh, they're a high-end uh, headphone manufacturer and so they hosted uh, the Audio Society. There was about um, probably over 100 members showed up. This particular Audio Society chapter has over 2,700 members, a $50 a year membership, which is very reasonable. So I met John down there for the first time. We uh, got to meet the CEO and the chief technology officer and a lot of the wonderful staff down there. And uh, they also sold raffle tickets. So I bought... Uh, 10 raffle tickets for $30, and they had a drawing. They used a random uh, number generator on a computer, and lo and behold, I was uh, probably one of the, I think I was the fourth person that was allowed to go ahead and pick something. So I picked uh, what's called the uh, Odyssey LCD i4 kind of in-your-ear uh, headphones. Uh, there are some other models that they have that are lower priced, these are actually $2,500. They have some that are called the iSign 10s and iSign 20s uh, that uh, probably sound pretty darn good. These are supposed to sound even better. They're uh, planar magnetic uh, headphones. And uh, here's, uh, here's the i4 up close. So it comes in a nice package and uh, multiple cables. Uh, this particular... Um, Cable that I've got hooked up has a 3.5 millimeter jack. I bought a, a quarter inch adapter the other day, so now I can use this one. Actually, part of the $2,500 is this uh, 
cable, which is about 400 bucks, and they actually snap out, pop out. So you can actually use uh, other cables. There's several others. Uh, there's this one that's made specifically for the iPhone, and it has um, it has a built-in uh, 2.4, um, yeah, 20, excuse me, 24-bit uh, DAC inside this with a clip-on for your shirt, and then uh, the ends actually uh, click to each of the left and the right uh, headphone speakers. And then there's another one that comes with it as well. It has some other options. Um, you notice that they have these over-the-ear hooks. They just kind of snap on a little bit. There's multiple uh, designs for those and uh, some other things in terms of fittings for your ears, like these little rubber cups that go over it. And they basically fit over the uh, side of your ears and gently, you don't have to push them in very hard and that's how, how they work. So I was uh, practicing listening to it with the other cable connected to my iPhone. It was very good, very much better than uh, the Sennheisers. And then um, my nephew Oliver came over, loaned me uh, uh, a shit Modi multi-bit DAC. So he recently got that and then uh, Cavalli tube uh, hybrid with a single tube. Um, headphone amp and now I'm able to uh, test it out using this. Uh, the benefit of this obviously is uh, similar quality and sound in terms of uh, for example when I was showing earlier the uh, Dragonfly Red DAC and so forth. Pretty good quality but uh, you're, you're kind of stuck with the uh, maximum volume available on your your iPhone and we're here now you have a volume control and you can can use that. So I was very lucky, uh, um, won this wonderful prize, and now it's uh, part of my digital collection along with the uh, DAC Magic and uh, the Dragonfly. In fact, uh, this technology was kind of reviewed. I have a stereophile magazine from December uh, 2017, John Atkinson, um, gave a good review and actually you could look it up stereophile magazine and uh, read the read the review so this is a, a great addition one that i hadn't anticipated but now i can listen to uh streaming uh, music on a set of expensive headphones that i normally wouldn't buy well i hope you enjoy your hobby as much as i do and as we enjoy our hobby hopefully we can influence other people to uh try to get involved as well so I would really enjoy visiting with the uh, LAOC Audio Society because that's another level for me in terms of meeting other people that are involved and enjoying the same thing that I like to do. And uh, I, I try to use some things I, I picked up, uh, t-shirts. I, I got involved with uh, buying some t-shirts from Channel 33 RPM, Frank Landry. So that got me going good. So it kind of spread the message when I go and buy records, or even when I go to the uh, uh, the gym, for example, wear them, and people kind of know that now uh, I'm an, a guy that plays records and cassettes and things like that. So uh, try to uh, emphasize vinyl, cassettes, um, educate people in terms of what they can do if they have some existing equipment. I have friends at the club now that they're putting together systems because they've got involved and they kind of enjoy it. And I try to help people out as well. And some of my latest acquisitions, like I mentioned, I got the Abbey Road album and that came with a, a Beatles t-shirt. And then one of the friends uh, who went to uh, Expona uh, last year, which is a big audio show in uh, Chicago, gave me that shirt. So. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, let's try to spread the word, get more people involved with whether it's uh, streaming, uh, whether it's vinyl, cassettes, CDs, you name it. So thanks again for watching. Really appreciate uh, you doing so. Take care.